Hello and welcome back to the Seller Dashboard tutorial section of our JBZoo tutorial videos. In this video, I'm going to show you all of the stuff that you need to set up in your product listings. Like I said in the previous portion of this video, to add a new product, you click here to add a product. There's also a selection at the bottom of the screen, let's get over to that, where you can duplicate a product or archive or unarchive a product. So you can use those if you already have a product set up that you know you just need to change some description information or such, or you already have your membership site information in there and you don't want to have to dig that up. You can duplicate a product, then go in and edit it and change it to be what you need for the new product. So let's edit the Graphics Booster Personal Usage License. When I click Edit, we get to this screen. This reminds you the product ID number. And at the top, I'm just going to run down every single one of the items on this page here. This is where you set to allow sales or not allow sales. If I click this to no and save it, as the tooltip says, the product will not be available for people to buy. This is whether you show the product in the JVZoo marketplace or not. This setting for time and date is when the product will launch. It will not show in the marketplace until this date and time. If you click on the launch date time, you can see that we have a calendar and a time that you can put in here. That's how you set these details up so you don't have to type it. Note that this is always on Eastern Standard Time. So if you want your product to launch at 8 a.m. Pacific time, make sure that you set it for 11 a.m. Eastern time. This is where you set up the product name, the currency that you're going to accept, the price. I'm going to go down the left side and then we'll deal with this right side stuff in a moment. Note that this is the maximum price if you're using a dime sale. If you're not familiar with what a dime sale is, that is a sale, and the settings are down the screen here, where you start at a lower price. For example, I could start at $5 for this product. And each time someone buys it, the price will increment up a certain amount. When they were first done, they always incremented up 10 cents at a time. That's why it was called a dime sale. But you can make it any increment you want, and you can also do it every one sale, every two sales, every five sales, however you want to do it. That information then is reflected on JVZoo's automatically generated buy buttons. It will say only three more left at this price or only one more left at this price. That's a great way during a launch time to spur people to buy. It creates a false scarcity. This is the commission payout that you will pay to affiliates. And if this is a recurring product, you can have options of when to pay, number of payments that you'll pay out. For example, suppose you wanted to pay 50% on the first purchase and then 10% every month after. That's where you would set this up. You would put 10% in the commission and 50% right here. We'll X out of this and uncheck that. Quantity, if you're selling a limited quantity of the product, that's where you would put here. Your support information, this is where you can put an email address for buyers to get support or and or a support URL for your support desk. That's where I have my Zendesk link. This is where you would put the link to a landing page if you're doing a pre-launch. For example, suppose your product is going to um, start sale selling one month from today. For the time from now until it actually launches, you might have a page that says, your product name is coming soon or launching on a particular day, maybe with a countdown. Enter your email here to be notified when it launches. Affiliates can then send people to that page and because they're sending through a JVZoo link, they will get cookied on this. And the last person to have cookied the buyer is the one who will get the credit for buying it. This is what you would put here as a landing page and then you would want to send all traffic to the sales page after the time of launch, if those are two different pages. Now your sales page, as with many of these, it's self-explanatory. This is where you put the URL of your sales page. 
and whether or not you want to pass the affiliate ID to the sales page. The affiliate ID is uh, the account number, which we showed earlier in my account, of the person who's promoting your product. And you may be doing something with those affiliate IDs, giving certain things to certain affiliates and such. There are so many things you can do with that. Whether or not you want to pass that affiliate ID to the sales page or not, you click here and there will be a little um, little tool tip here that shows you what the link will look like. The next section is very interesting and pot potentially technical for you. The delivery method. There are two ways that you can deliver the product. JVZoo offers a protected download which you can upload a single zip file to. If you want to de deliver the product that way, the zip file goes into JVZoo's system and then when someone buys it, there's a download link right on their receipt. They can click that link, download it, and you don't have to set up any download area. Now, the plus of that, obviously, is you don't have to do the work to set up a download area. The minus is you don't get all of the opportunities that a download area gives you. For example, to sell other products to the buyer, to maintain a member's area, etc. If you want to do something other than a protected download, you need to use a thank you page. My delivery uh, method of choice is DLGuard, which is a product protection script. So what you're going to see here is the settings for my particular DLGuard that I use. In this case, I do need to pass parameters to the download page. Your member's script or member's area or download protection script will tell you whether or not it needs that. In most cases, it does, and I don't believe it will hurt to pass those parameters down. They'll just get ignored if they're not needed. And on this link, JVZoo has some information on how to protect a page if you just want to do a simple protected download page without any sort of scripts involved. For my DL guard, it requires this as the download page setting. This is an, a domain of my own, securedordering.com, and then my, the rest of my required DL guard information. DL guard gave this to me, so I didn't have to think about it. They just said, put it there. This is where you set your guarantee return period because this is a graphics product that people can download and immediately use and copy and do whatever they want to. I have zero days return policy, but you may want to have 30 days or 60 days if it's software. So you set that up here. The next section is to make your product eligible for product of the day. There are reasons why you may or may not want to do this. If you do and you want JVZoo to consider this for product of the day, which basically means that JVZoo becomes an affiliate and pushes your product hard through emails and through banners on their site, you can click this and give them a specific custom commission payout if it's different than what you're giving other affiliates. Now we're to the affiliate approval. You can either auto approve anyone who requests a link to your product, which I do not recommend ever doing. I don't think anyone should, I don't even think JVZoo should have that on there, but that's not my choice to make. Most of the time you'll want manual approval unless you don't want affiliates to be able to sell it, then you say no affiliates allowed. After that, you can put in your affiliate terms and notes to affiliates. This is what shows up on the previous affiliate page that I showed you in the last video. This is where you can control what shows up on that page, all of the information. You can put information here about your terms and requirements. You can put announcements here. All of this is HTML enabled. And then this is custom receipt info that will go on the buyer's receipt if they need specific information about logging in, getting their product, etc. Finally, if this is an old product that you're not selling anymore, you can archive it by clicking it here, and it will not be available for purchase anymore. In the last segment of this video series, I'm going to go through the right column. So come right back for the next video, and we'll cover the rest of that there.